Helmsman trawlers are well built from the keel up. We are highlighting in a series of short videos some of the features and construction methods that distinguish these finely crafted boats. In this episode, we're looking at the shape of Helmsman trawlers' hulls. This video addresses the 37, 38, 43, and 46 hulls, which, though obviously different in size, share key characteristics. The 31 model has a different hull shape. Most boaters are aware that the majority of modern monohull motor yachts and trawlers are classified under one of three categories, displacement, semi-displacement, and planing. This broad characterization is misleading or at least oversimplifying. Instead, consider the range of hull designs to be a wide spectrum, with an infinite number of degrees and variations within the spectrum. We can illustrate one extreme of the spectrum as a log, a pure displacement design, and the other side of the spectrum is a board, which with sufficient power will plane easily across the water. However, neither of these extremes is a perfect boat. The log is rolly, and the board is skittish and bouncy and hard to control. So real hulls are designed to be somewhere in between. It's been said that boats are a collection of compromises, a bit of a cynical view in my opinion. The other way to say it is that every design feature is for a beneficial purpose, but which comes at the expense of something else, which may not be important to you or your boating. Speaking for Helmsman trawlers, I'll point out some of our hull features and their purposes in our very modern hull design, which is quite like you'll find in many contemporary ocean-going commercial vessels. Starting with the bow, ours is a moderately fine entry with a deep forefoot with enough volume and buoyancy to resist piercing the back of waves when pushing forward in following seas. There are no hard chines forward on the hull or anywhere. While glamour photos of yachts show them in placid conditions, this is the real world, sometimes anyway. Our bow holds course by digging in well against quartering seas, and it rides up and down in heading seas without excessive pounding or slapping, which on other boats can be very jarring and uncomfortable for minutes, let alone hours. To illustrate this deep bow feature, note that the lowest point in the bilge of our hulls is in fact far forward under the forward stateroom. The hull quickly widens aft from there and runs smoothly upward for efficient water flow under the hull and to provide buoyancy where the boat is carrying weight amidships and aft. The stern is broad with very shallow dead rise, creating a lot of stability against rolling quite unlike the log in the earlier illustration. But very rounded chines help to ease the motion of the boat to prevent harsh or snappy rolling. The nearly flat hull lines at the stern allow these boats to get up and go, to some degree, with enough power applied, and they are not limited to displacement speeds. The relatively small amount of transom in the water helps keep the boat from getting pushed off course in following seas. We use a very substantial keel full length and heavily built, which provides excellent tracking and good protection against damage from accidental grounding. The rudder is supported by a hefty skeg, which also provides protection for the prop. I've described the benefits, so what are the trade-offs? These are certainly not the fastest boats. They do not have as much interior volume in the forward spaces as some designs. They are heavier, and for our kind of cruising, none of that matters.